Hi, welcome to Blender Tutor. I'm Tom, and today we're gonna go over cloth simulation in Blender 2.9. I'm gonna try something new today, and instead of just doing a straightforward tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create five different props in Blender using the cloth simulator. That way you could see a few different use cases for it. We're gonna go over creating a blanket, pillows, curtains, a flag, and a beanbag chair. I used all these props and modeled a few simple objects to create this finished scene. Let's get started. Let's start off by making the blanket. Start out by making a mattress with our default cube. Make sure to apply scale before beveling using Control A. Then just shade smooth and add in a plane to create a floor. Now enable collisions in the physics tab to the mattress and the ground plane. Now we're ready to make the blanket. Add in a new plane and move it up above the mattress. Scale it up as big as you want it. I'm adding some rotation so it looks a bit more messy. Now go into edit mode and subdivide 20 to 30 times and enable the cloth sim in the physics tab. I usually turn the quality steps up to 10, lower the vertex mass, and go down to collisions, turn that up to 5, and then turn on self collisions. You can now press the space bar and watch your simulation, but it is very boring. Add in a subsurf modifier to smooth it out and set shading to smooth. To get more wrinkles, let's add some force field objects. Add a turbulence force field, crank up the strength to 80, but you could experiment with that number. Also play with the noise and the size values. Next, add a vortex force field and rotate it a bit. Play around with the strength value, around 6 worked for me. Click on the blanket and in the cloth settings, turn down the tension and compression values under stiffness. This will allow it to bend and wrinkle a bit easier. I also ended up subdividing one more time to give more resolution for the wrinkles. At this point, I'm just tweaking the physics settings to get a good looking result. When you're happy with the results, you can apply the cloth modifier to the mesh in the modifiers tab. Lastly, I just added a solidify modifier so it looked a bit more like a blanket instead of just a thin sheet. You can also delete the turbulence and vortex fields so that they don't mess with future simulations. Okay, with the blanket finished, let's make the pillow next. Add in a new plane and scale it to the shape of the pillow you want. Subdivide with loop cuts to get square shaped faces, then subdivide the entire plane 5 to 8 times to get enough resolution to work with. In edit mode, select all with A, then extrude up on the Z axis. Select the outer vertices on all of the edges, scale on the Z to 0, and press M and merge by distance. Now we can add the cloth sim in the physics tab. I'm just scaling the pillow and placing it closer to where it will sit on the bed. Remember to apply scale with Control A. Set quality steps to 10, collision quality to 5, and enable self collisions. Now to actually make the pillow, we need to turn on pressure in the cloth sim menu. You can watch in real time as the pillow inflates. Just find a value that gives you the results you're looking for. About a five worked for me. When you're happy with the pillow, apply the cloth simulation in the modifier tab. To add a pillowcase, you could just select a portion of the pillow mesh, duplicate it with Shift D, scale it up, and then hit P to separate by selection, which creates its own separate object. For added detail, you can sculpt the pillowcase to have a bit more wrinkles, or you could just use some textures with wrinkles on the texture itself if the pillow isn't that important in your scene. You could also reset the origin point for your objects by right-clicking on the object, go to Set Origin, and select Origin to Geometry. I also moved the pillowcase cover a bit more over to cover more of the pillow by selecting the edge in Edit Mode, turning on proportional editing and moving it along the x-axis, then scaling up in object mode so it wasn't intersecting with the pillow itself. And there we go, pillows are finished. 
All right, next up is curtains. Add a new plane, rotate it so it's standing up, and scale it up on the Z to get a tall rectangle. Add loop cuts in edit mode to get square faces again, and then subdivide 15 to 20 times. In edit mode, select the top row of vertices, then go to the object data properties tab and create a vertex group. Assign the selected vertices to the new group and rename it to pin. We'll be using shape keys to animate the plane so it forms the wrinkles we want for the curtains. Add a new shape key. The first one will be the starting default shape of our mesh, and then add a second shape key, which will be what we use to animate our mesh during the cloth simulation. In edit mode, select the top left vertex, press Shift S, and select cursor to select it. Now change the pivot point to the 3D cursor and scale the top row of vertices toward the left edge. The smaller you scale it, the more wrinkles you'll get in the simulation. Back in object mode, we can now move the value between 0 and 1 to animate the top row of vertices. Add a cloth sim to the plane and adjust the quality settings in vertex mass and enable self collisions. Under the Shape tab, select our Pin Vertex group in the Pin group. On frame 10 of the timeline, add a keyframe to our Key 1 Shape key with it set to 0. Now move the playhead to frame 30 in the timeline and set the value to 1 and add a second keyframe. You can press I to add a keyframe over any selected property. Now press the spacebar to watch our cloth sim. You'll need to tweak some settings in the Cloth Physics tab, such as Vertex Mass and Stiffness. I also edited the Key 1 shape and scaled it down to compress even more. That finally got me the results I was looking for, but this is a process and will take some experimentation. When you're happy with the results, delete the shape key and the basis in the shape keys menu, then apply the cloth sim in the modifiers panel. Last, add a solidify modifier, and now you have a curtain. Let's make the flag next. This is actually probably the easiest of the cloth sims that I'm going to go over. Using the images as planes add-on, import an image of whatever flag you want to animate. Add some loop cuts to get square shaped faces and then subdivide the entire plane 10 to 15 times. In edit mode, select the top two and the bottom two vertices on the left edge of the flag, create a new vertex group and assign the selected vertices to it and rename it to pin. Now in edit mode, highlight the outer vertices of the flag Press Shift E to add an edge crease and set that to 1. This way the corners will stay sharp when we add a subsurf modifier. Now let's add the cloth sim. Adjust the quality steps, vertex mass, stiffness, and select our pin vertex group under pin group. Turn up the collisions quality and enable self collisions. Now we could test our cloth sim. By the way, an EV you're gonna to have to go to the material settings and turn off show back face. Otherwise, you'll be getting some weird results when the flag intersects with itself. That's kind of just turned on by default when we use the images as planes add-on. Now to make this actually look good, let's add a wind force field. Make sure to point your wind force field at your flag in the direction you want it to be blowing. Crank the strength up to something huge like 1000 or even higher. Also, press Ctrl-2 to add a subsurf modifier set to level 2 and enable smooth shading. The trick to the wind force field to get the flag moving without actually animating the rotation of the wind is to increase the noise value. With noise set to 5, I raise the strength up to about 2500 and I get a pretty good result. And we have a flag. By the way, you can cache the animation in the cloth sim settings if you want to render this out as an animation. But for my scene, I actually just ended up hanging the flag from the wall as a decoration. Okay, last up is the beanbag. This is another simple one. To start out, let's use the default cube as our starting point. I'm going to scale it up a bit and then hit Ctrl-3 and apply the subsurf modifier. Now add in a plane, scale it up, and enable collisions in the physics tab. On our beanbag, 
add a cloth sim and tweak all the normal settings that we've been using for the other cloth sims in this tutorial and make sure to enable self collisions. Currently the cloth sim doesn't do anything, kind of just looks like a very slowly dropping ball. To fix that, we're gonna have to use the pressure setting in the cloth sim, just like we did for the pillow. But this time, we're actually gonna set it to a negative value. To get more wrinkles, let's actually turn the vertex mass up a little bit so it seems a little heavier. Set it to about 0.4 or 0.5. I'm also adding a turbulence force field to get more deformation in our beanbag. I set the strength pretty high to around 80. Mess around with the settings and try other force fields to get different looks. Once you're happy with it, apply the cloth sim in the modifier tab and add materials. All right, and the beanbag is done. Also, to get a bit more variation, in edit mode, after I applied the cloth sim, I selected random vertices, turned up proportional editing with the random setting selected, and I scaled everything down a little bit. And that's it. Thanks for watching, and let me know what you thought of this new tutorial format. Should I do more like this, or do you prefer my normal style better? Also, check me out on Instagram at thomaslatvies 3 d and make sure to tag me in anything you make from these tutorials. Also, I'd like to announce that I've launched a Patreon for my YouTube channel. Depending on the tier you choose, some of the perks include early access to my tutorials, high resolution wallpaper downloads, shoutouts in my videos, and access to my project files. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and check out some of my other Blender physics tutorials.